Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's all right, we're going to worship him today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, God. Worthy are you, Lord, worthy are you, Lord. Worthy, 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 worthy. Worthy, 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 worthy. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Worthy, worthy. Worthy, worthy. worthy, worthy. y'all to go too far. There is none like you, God. We worship you, God. We're going to do a quick transition. Amen. I got some people who don't know they don't stand by, but they don't stand by. Hallelujah. I want to read a scripture. And if you want to be seated after I read the scripture, you can be seated. Children's church in here this time, all right? I want to do something. I want to read the scripture. In Isaiah chapter number six, it says this. It says that in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw, not nobody else, I saw. The Lord. I didn't see an angel. I didn't see a prophet. I didn't see a doctor or a lawyer or a nurse. Or... I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord. I saw him for myself. And guess where he was, y'all? He was seated on the throne. I saw the Lord and he was seated on the throne. I want you to get a picture of that. And it wasn't just enough that he was seated on the throne. He was high. And he was lifted up. <laughs> he was lifted up. And the train of his robe. Train of his robe. Not just the, the train of his robe. It's filled Above it, Mr. Tom, it stood seraphim, each one having six wings. With two, he covered his face. Mm -hmm. With two, he covered his feet. And with two, he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy! 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 Is the Lord of hosts. And the whole earth was filled with his glory. And on the post of the door was shaken by the voice of him who cried out. And the house of the Lord 
filled with smoke. I may elicit some help, Pastor Jesse. I may elicit some help, Minister Brenda. But holy. He said this. He says, in the year that King Uzziah died. You come on here, Brother Floyd. You come on here, y'all come on. In the year that King Uzziah died. I saw, and nobody else saw it but me, I, I saw, I saw I was looking for myself. The year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord. The Lord means the owner, the source, and the sustainer of all things. I saw the owner of owners. He was high and lifted up. He was high and lift it up. And I've been having a problem, y'all. I've been having a problem lately. And, and, I, and the problem is this. That I've been noticing lately that a lot of people have been trying to get spiritual things without the spirit giver. I've been watching. I've been hearing. I even heard somebody say one time that they're now what's called Christian witches. There are people who are playing with tarot cards and joining all kind of this and joining all kind of that. And, and, and they're doing it in the name of spirituality. I, I had someone call me this week and told me that they had somebody give them some crystals and told them to manifest things. And there are people who are trying to manifest stuff in the spirit without the manifester. There are people who are trying to get things without the thing giver. There are people who are trying to get the stuff without the stuff giver. There are people who are trying to be blessed without the blessing. There are people who are trying to, 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 to do self-care without the self-care giver. And I heard somebody say that if you're doing, trying to do self-care without the caretaker, sooner or later everything you do is going to end up in toxic. There are people who are trying to define love without the lover of our souls. And so God asked me to do something simple. And it's this. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. Maybe the reason why the prophet could see the Lord is because he was too busy looking at the political leaders. Maybe the reason why he couldn't see the Lord was because he was too busy looking at things and stuff and people and we can get so caught up in looking at stuff that we forget who gives it to us it's okay for us to get things God is not intimidated by getting things or having things the problem comes in when the things have us and so the Lord told me last week to talk about how the Lord was our shepherd and because the Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. And he told me to ask this thing. And he told me to ask that because the Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. He told me to tell you that this year was going to be the year that we need to focus on the shepherd. So the day I had a whole message prepared about talking about the shepherd. And as I was walking past my mother-in-law and she I, I'm, I'm glad she opened up the message for me and so I can get to say I had a tag team message with my mother-in-law listen but here's the thing he says in the year that King Uzziah died I saw the Lord and how he lifted up and I wanted to, to tell you the Lord told me as I was walking past her he said could you do me a favor and anytime the Lord asks for a favor I know it ain't a, a, a question it's a commandment for me he said, I want you to make an attempt to introduce me to people. He says, I want you to make an attempt to describe me. And I, I simply said, Lord, I don't know if I can fully do that. So I got two backups <laughs> just in case I need to call one of them up. And if you need to be seated in the front row, you can. And I'll call you back up because we're going to sing in a couple of seconds again, something else. But he said this. He said, I want you to describe me. And I'm going to be honest with you. At that moment, I realized I don't know how. Because God is everything. God is everything. From God's beginning, and he's had none. He's always been.
with everything. God has always been a way maker. God has always been the one who makes a way out of nowhere. We'll get to the offering or whatever later, but I, I, while I'm not on it, he gives seed to the sower. But he's our way maker. And we can't even find the way unless God gives us the way to find it. God is our truth giver. God is truth. God is a very present help in time of trouble. I don't know exactly how to describe God other than to say what he does for us. But he's my king. He's my ruler. There, there, there is no one like him. And I don't know how to, to even, I'm, I'm trying, even as I'm sitting here thinking, there's so many things that are running through my mind whenever you tell me to describe God. Because the only thing I can think of is that he's the air I breathe. He's my everything. When I couldn't find peace or catch peace, even in a fast car, when the police and the doctors come in and tell me some things that I don't even want to hear, let alone be prepared to hear, he's the one who gives me my breath back. He's the one who, when you can feel, and I don't know if you've ever been here, and I pray that none of you ever get to this place where you feel like your peace is slipping, where you feel like your heart is overwhelmed, then he's the rock that's higher than I. When my peace is slipping and I feel like I'm losing my mind, Pastor Joseph, I can hear the song, peace, peace, wonderful peace, coming down from the Father above. My heart is overwhelmed. You lead me to the rock. When my heart is broken and I feel betrayed and I feel left out, he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. When I feel like I'm getting overwhelmed by debt, he reminds me that I was young and now I'm old. But yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No as seed begging bread. When I'm in a foreign country and whether it's hot or too cold or too whatever, he reminds me that I'm Jehovah Shama. That I never come or go. I just Shama. I'm already there. So he told me to tell Jonah that while you're running from me, I'm going to be where you ran from. I'm going to be where you're running to. And I'm going to be walking right alongside you while you're running because I'm God. There's no question of his greatness. The songwriter says, no searching of his power. Or the wonder of his glory to him 40 years is but one hour. He says, I alone am God. He said that when someone asked me concerning an account, I looked around and I couldn't find no one behind me who was greater. I couldn't look before me and find one who was greater. He says, I looked in the past, I looked in the present, I looked in the future. And because I couldn't find anybody who can hold me accountable, he says, I have sworn by myself, says the Lord. See, my, she just messed it up because she said he's that big. But see, it was his footprints that hollowed out the mountains. <laughs> it, it, was, it was his footprints that hollowed out the mountains. The earth is his throne and uh, heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. I don't even know how to be, and, and begin to describe that God. He's the Lord of hosts. That means anything that you think is powerful and God-like, he's the Lord over it. Check it out. Our biggest enemy, Satan himself, has to come and present himself before God and say, have you considered Job? 
I need you to catch something because there has never been or nor will there ever be anything bigger than our God. The songwriter says, our God is champion. I don't know if I'm doing okay. I, I still think I'm failing at this assignment. But our God is champion. You see, when you interpret that, that means never lost a case. Never lost a battle. You may have lost a few. But in him, the war is complete. There's victory. There's victory. There's victory. There's victory. There's victory. And I don't know. I, I'm at a huge loss. I'm at a huge deficit. Because when I when my heart is overwhelmed, I, 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 he's my healer. He's my healer. Our God is so strong that even if earthly sickness, he decides to let us succumb to it, we still have healing in another realm. How can we be him? To whom can we compare him to? There's none. There is nothing bigger than our God. There's nothing bigger than our God. There's no circumstance that he can't bring us out of. There's no thing that he can't see us through. If we find ourselves in a courtroom, he's a lawyer in the courtroom. We find ourselves in the valley. He's a lily in the valley. In the middle of the night, he can be our bright and morning song. We find our way in jail and we sing at midnight like Paul and Silas did. He can break into a jail cell. We find our way in, and we find ourselves in water like Peter. And it seems like water is filling up the boat. Let me show you how powerful our God is. The other day I just had a thought, a fleeing thought. And I said, and I never told this person that, but it was just because it's not about me, but it's about God. God put it in my spirit to pray for Brother Jeremy on two separate occasions. Two separate occasions. He just dropped it in my spirit. And I just, Lord, wherever he is, bless him. That quick. Didn't put a whole lot into it. I just agreed with God. The next day, Jeremy called me and he told me, um, he, he don't care if I tell this. He said, he said, brother, I was out duck hunting. And he said something happened and the brother missed. And some of the bullet fragments hit me in the head from the duck hunting journey. And then, and, and, and he was okay. He was okay. He bled a little bit, but he was okay. The other day I called him and we were just talking. And I was about to tell him that I had prayed for him that something happened and he popped up in my spirit and I just said a prayer from while he was in school and he proceeded to tell me uh, he was on a boat and he said they had went out on a boat and he said the boat driver had an accident he said I was an accident it was oversight he forgot to plug in some items on the boat and he said that while he was out there they realized that the boat was sinking and he said they was in the middle of the water and it didn't have enough time to go back to the to shore. He said, so the boat decided to turn the other direction, the driver, and just see if he can go further out to sea. And he said he thought that was the craziest thing. He said it was cold, it was wet. And then he said this. He said he realized later that the boat is traveling. The guy said that I, I would never be able to make it back to sea. But if I travel toward the direction of the Coast Guard base, when I yell, mayday, 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 he says, right before the boat really went, started going down, 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 he said, they showed up. You see, our God knows how to put the right thing with the right people with the right time. And that's not even about me or about him. It's about how God knows how to tie everything together. Our God. Our God, 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 
our God. And if God is that good, why won't we tell somebody about him? Listen, listen, listen. Our God is so awesome. In the middle of a pandemic, when everything around us is going crazy, because we've nestled ourselves in him, have you noticed how all this stuff is just seemingly to be just passing by? Who else but God? And I'm still at a deficit for describing him. And so I'm just tempted to start asking y'all, just yell out one of the things that God, but if God is so awesome and he's so powerful and he's so, and I hear people all the time judging folks. But God says, I got your back. God says, if you cry out to me while I can, I can hear you, God says, I can hear you. God says, I can hear you if you cry out to me. He says, I got you. I got your way fixed. I got your way fixed. I got your way fixed. In troubled times, I'm, I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. Who else can be our counselor? Wonderful counselor. Wheel in the middle of a wheel. I co-pop. My mama used to say, he's my boyfriend. God is. Do you know that there's a difference between being alone and being lonely? You got God. You might be alone, but you'll never be lonely. Listen, he's our father. Have you ever noticed, sometimes we run to people. I had this girl who didn't have a daddy. And for whatever reason, the Lord told me to tell her this. Come to me every day. And I'm going to tell you who you are. How many of us are running to other people for validation? And God is the validation giver. And I'm still struggling. He's our healer. He's our banner of completed victory. He's the lover of our soul. Sometimes we ought to just go in a quiet room and put on some music and just dance with God. Do you know There were over a million cells that traveled towards an edge, but the one that won was you. Do you know that your very hairs on your head are not only numbered, but they're ordered. They're counted. He's a specific God. He knows. Do you know that if you speak a word, in a microphone, scientists can tell your voice apart from anybody else's past, present, or future. You know why? Because you are a designer original. Our God was that specific when he made us. So why wouldn't he want to hear your story? Why wouldn't he want to talk to you and have you talk to him? Some may say you're too fat, you're too skinny, you're too this, you're too that. You're too black, you're too white, you're too old, you're too young, you're too this. But God never said that. All God says is, I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. He loves us. He is the Lord who sanctifies. I'm cheating, I'm looking at some of the banners. <laughs> He's the Lord who sanctifies. He sanctifies us. He's our righteousness. Oh. I don't know what takes people so long to meet the Lord, but I wish I would have met him earlier.
Somebody has something in their spirit. Is there somebody, something I missed that God is for you? Just yell it out. Yell it out. He's a keeper. He's a great provider. He's a blessing. He is. See why you have to do that. He just is. <laughs> he is. He is. He's my security blanket. Lover of our soul. A friend. And see, a lot of people don't understand that. That's, they think that's overrated because of the way we do friendship. But he's our friend. He's my security. I think I'm going to start doing that. Somebody run up on me and they're just going to yell, security! <laughs> He's my security. He's my pacemaker. You know, if God decided that your heart would just stop beating right now, it would just stop. He's my timekeeper. All of my days are in his hands. I know I'm taking the second message of the year to describe who God is, or at least make an attempt, a feeble attempt to do it. But I pray for you that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know the hope of your calling. I pray that. Your today collides headlong with his eternity. I pray that you would meet him and begin to see him. That the veil would come off of your eyes so you can see who he really is. Past religion. Past the rules and the rituals and the, you got to wear your skirt down to here and your, your, your skirt up to here and your, your this and your that. Pass all of that into a relationship with God. Pray that when you are driving to work, you pass by the bridge, he'll show you a sunrise that you've never seen before. And that you'll know that he's showing you that view. I pray that as you're driving in your car, that you'll see things. Well, let me say this. I pray that you'll begin to see people the way he sees them. No matter what they look like, what their background is, what they're claiming to be or what they're claiming not to be or who they're claiming. Past all that, I pray that you would see them for who he created them to be. And that your love and that your care would go out to them. I pray that God would make your cup run over. And I'm serious when I say that. Some of us are, he talked to me one day about ministering from an empty cup. But I pray that your cup would run over, that you would be so filled with his presence that when you walk by, people would know who, he, who you are because you're here. I pray that your cup would be so running over, so overflowing, that people would know that you belong to him and that he belongs to you. I pray that he would be your keeper. That he would be your keeper. I pray. I speak life.